What's up, Wolfman fans? Oh my holy lord, I just recorded an entire video, was in the process of wrapping it up, and somebody called me. Which means that my phone stopped recording to go to this phone call. And what was it? A stupid telemarketer. It wasn't even a, you know, an actual person. It was just a voice recording. Oh my god. I can't count how many times I've gone and put myself on the National Do, Do Not Call Registry. I really hope at some point they make that illegal. I've heard rumors that they will, that that's supposed to be highly illegal uh, now. I, I don't know how true that is. You guys can comment below and let me know. But, God, it's obnoxious. And, of course, again, I'm recording on my phone. Why is that? Because it's the simplest way for me to sit there and get my thoughts out there and quickly turn around and upload them, and there it is. Bada bing, bada boom, you know, there it is. So, anyway, moving on. What I wanted to talk about today is something that I've talked about many times in the past, and uh, those of you who are subscribed to me, even those that you, you may have just seen a couple of videos, you guys know this about me. I am incredibly passionate about history, and nothing irks me more than uh, the misrepresentation Ooh, excuse me, the misrepresentation of history and completely lying about history, making things up. Also feminists. I, I don't know why, but out of every SJW group out there, feminists piss me off more than anybody else. Probably because they try to make everything a feminist issue and weasel their way into everything as if like they're standing in the back of a crowded room jumping up and down screaming going, Hey, hey guys, look at me, look at me. Always trying to gain attention for themselves. And nine times out of ten, they're full of shit and nobody cares. That's why nobody's paying attention. Anyway, that was a waffle and a half. Moving on. Listen, um, history, I, I know and this is at the complete risk of me beating a dead horse. And, um, and, and I, I do have problems with that because, you know, repeated uh, topics, repeated subjects constantly touched upon uh, different issues after a while, they begin to lose their meaning, and uh, the argument begins to lose value because it's just so constantly used. Like at one time, calling somebody was a racist was a little more taken a little more seriously, and nowadays it's because it's used so much, it's it's lost all meaning. So at the risk of that, I'm still going to go into this because I have more to say, and I hope you guys can come along with me, and uh, I hope you take something away from this and understand it as much as I do. Look, why do I love history? Well, look, it's a roadmap of how we got from here to here. How we got from how we were um, way back when in either tribal or maybe a feudal society and how we've advanced from that time up through the, up through the centuries to get to where we are now. It's a roadmap, especially if it's correctly written. The problem is we understand that history is written by the winner. How different would history read if Napoleon hadn't been defeated at Waterloo? How, how different would it seem? What if uh, Germany had been uh, victorious in World War I or World War II, whatever? How different would history seem? So the job of historians and uh, archaeologists and people such as that we take we make efforts to dig through the different layers of bs and the different stories myths legends whatever to get down to the truth so we have an understanding of what really took place and from that we can learn lessons we can learn interesting stuff that we never knew before but we can learn lessons about who we are where we come from where we're going the uh, pitfalls and the promise, okay? That is the point of it. What is so infuriating to me is when you get people who have clearly a uh, clearly a, an agenda, okay? And, and, and I say I'd use agenda in today's um, in today's terms where having an agenda is typically a bad thing. These people that have this ulterior motive, and telling you certain types of history, this revisionist history, to make things seem different, to downplay the achievements of one group of people 
and pump up the achievements of another, even when they're not earned achievements. You see what I'm saying? And if that seems a little too vague, I'll, I'll help you. This has been going on since, uh, I don't know, possibly the 70s, but I'm going to speci specifically sit with the uh, uh, 80s and 90s. And you guys who went to school back then, you learned about the Civil War. I'm sure you did. What was the main thing? When I say United States Civil War, what do you think of? Slavery, right? I knew it. And here's the reason why. Because they wouldn't stop talking about it. They wouldn't stop throwing it in your face, saying, hey, slavery, slavery, don't, don't worry about this over here. Slavery, see how bad it was? See how bad it was? And, it, you know, it's so bad. And then they go to the 1960s and talk about, hey, racism, look how bad it was. There's so many people that know so much about, um, you know, Jim Crow laws and racism in the 1960s and couldn't tell you a damn thing about Vietnam, even though Vietnam was one of those big events that was taking place back then. Is that not odd? How, many, how, how, how is it that people can talk to you and tell you so much about slavery, but can't tell you jack crap about the Civil War, like some of the battles that were fought? They can't, they can't because it's never focused on, it's not taught. And this is kind of a, it's not a revision history, it's just, it's, it's manipulation of history. But now what we have is a revisionist history that's happening. We're not only like 1619 Project, if you saw my video on that, you know what I'm talking about. Hopefully you guys did your research on that and you see just how insidious that is. But it goes deeper. There is history that is called, um, it, they're call, it's called Afrocentric history. And what this is, is it's a history that bases everything basically on Africa, okay? That everything started with Africa. All the greatest civilizations in the world started with Africa. And I think one of, and they see even, you know, the Incas, Mayas, like the Central and South American uh, uh, cultures, those great uh, native empires or kingdoms, that they were started by Africans as well. And China! I think, I think out of all of them, that's possibly one of the most insulting ones, is saying that China was started by Africans. China is one of the oldest civilizations on the face of the earth. It has existed forever. And while some other civilizations in the Middle East were trying to get their crap together and trying to figure things out, China was well ahead of them. China was one of the oldest and most advanced civilizations this world has ever seen at one time, okay? A, a, a dude, a tribal, uh, tribal African did not start that. A tribal African did not start anything in Europe as far as the great European kingdoms and empires. They started from various tribes, uh, of a lot of different Nordic, Germanic, Celtic tribes, whatever, Slavic tribes. Um, there was Mongol influence as well, especially in the Eastern European uh, area, okay? And there was a lot of Greek influence, Greek and Roman, because those great civilizations, which also they claim were started by Africans, they weren't. But anyway, that, that those influences helped build Europe and the great kingdoms of Europe, okay? Africa, there's a reason that when European colonists were going into Africa and snagging up bits of Africa as the parts of their extended empires, they were running into these, uh, what they deemed as um, less evolved and barbaric subcultures. That's what they thought of them as, which I'm not saying was a right. I, right I'm not defending that mindset. But what you're, you have to understand is this is a group of people that has lived kind of in isolation, just doing their own thing for hundreds of years without in outside influence. And everything that they did worked for them so they didn't change it. It's kind of the same thing as how, how Native Americans, not, they did things that way for a very long time. You know, they didn't, ch their, their technology really didn't advance but their culture still flourished. Look at Japan. When the Tok uh, Tokugawa sh shogunate took over in Japan, and they, uh, they instituted an isolationist policy from the outside world. 
And for like, a, I think it was a good 200 years or something, the country was just frozen in time. So while, you know, the United States had already gone through the Civil War, we had already, we had, you know, we got trains, we got telegrams, we got, you know, all these different technological advances. Japan is still running in a feudal, uh, running as a feudal, feudal society, you know, and they have an, they have an emperor, they have uh, samurai, and it's, it's very, it's, it's very, it's not as technologically advanced, it seems inferior. It doesn't mean that the culture itself isn't rich and have a wonderful history, but it just didn't advance. That happens a lot all over the world, and Africa is a prime example example of that. So I don't care what you're t trying to say that, well, you know, it was really, you know, tribes from Africa. No, it wasn't. Don't, don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining. You're full of shit. Now, I'm not saying that slavery was a good thing. But it happened. And you know what? White people were slaves too. This happened a lot in North Africa. The uh, Arab slave traders, they would capture merchant ships and enslave the crews. In fact, if you go back in history and look, the United States Marines, one of the first big uh, engagements that Marines, United States Marines had involvement with was Tripoli. Why Tripoli? We were, we were invading and going to war with the Barbary states who had been capturing our ships and our sailors and taking them as hostages, taking them as slaves. They would try to maybe sell them back to us at ransom, but we weren't willing to negotiate. You give us our people back or we're going to come over there and whip your ass. That's what that was about. So it wasn't only black people that were slaves. They, they did have black people that were slaves. That's unfortunate. Anybody as a slave is an unfortunate thing. No, no version of racism is good. No version of slavery is good. And over the most of the world over, we all agree. It's in fact, there's the, the, amount, the number of true racists out there, especially in Western society, is so minuscule, it's a non-issue that you just won't shut up about. You keep wanting to talk. And keep wanting to bring it up, but it's not an issue, okay? And you know what? I'm sorry to say this. This Afro, the Afrocentric revisionist history is nothing more than racism being used to basically wipe out the achievements of any kind of white civilization. And really, it goes to really wipe out achievements by other great civilizations in the world as well. Not just whites. But whites seem to be the target. Okay? And you tell me how that isn't racist. You tell me how rewriting history to completely, um, to completely wipe out any kind of uh, white heritage and you know, white civilization and white advancements and achievements, and you tell me how the blacks, black people were really the ones who made all those achievements and advances, and then I will tell you how the Aryan race was actually somehow superior. See where I did there? That black Afrocentric history, that's rewriting history to basically write everybody else out and make them seem superior to everybody else, is no is 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 no more uh, legitimate than Hitler's arguments. Okay, it's just as ridiculous and just as despicable. Okay, there is an there is a world here that's doing its best and trying its hardest to try to bring people together and all of us get along and work together towards the same goals. Okay, this this was this that's what's happening. But there are a select few people, and unfortunately, they're loud as hell, and they get the media attention. You know, that kind of squeaky wheel gets the grease kind of thing? The louder you are, the more people seem to pay attention. These are the people that talk about how it's really unfair because it's the black people that have made all the achievements, or it's this, that, and the other. Look, I'm sorry that your life is not as important as you would like it to be. 
you can't make up history and all of a sudden you're a scholar. You can't, that's not how this works. You can't claim that you're fighting racism. You know, you can't claim that you're fighting racism and all of a sudden you're going to be an activist that will be put in the history books. That's not how this works. Your fight needs to be real. It needs to be pure. Legitimate of some, of some sorts, okay? You can't just make shit up. Nobody take that, and the fact that it, that's even being taken seriously, some kind of made up revisionist history is being taken seriously, is infuriating. And that should infuriate you too. It should scare the hell out of you. Because think of you guys that have kids. People talk a lot today about the whole pedophilia thing and human trafficking. And yes, it's despicable, it's disturbing, it's disgusting. And great, great efforts need to be made to put an end to that. And the people that are responsible, I mean, I'm execute them. Because as far as I'm concerned, you took a life. And it's not like you ended that kid's life, but you took their innocence and their life from them at an early age. And now they have to live with that pain for the rest of their life. You don't deserve to live, okay? That's how it should be. But here's the thing. There are people that are using the innocence and the easily malleable brains, the, the incorrigible uh, brains of ch children, that they're you know soaking up all this new knowledge at this young age, and they're manipulating it and feeding them false information. They're feeding them lies. For what reason? They can raise their status in society. That's all it is. And many of them, they're actually racists that don't like white people. They've been taught through their life to not, let, not trust or like white people. Okay? And they will continue to push their narrative until they see that they are on a position where they're on top. But that's just another form of racism. All these lies, these, that's all they are. They're lies. It's manipulation. And it's wrong. Now I invite anybody out there, black, white, uh, of Middle Eastern, Asian, whatever descent, any of you people, I invite you all to come and work with us. Work together to build a better world. Now, I'm not for open borders, so if you want to come and be a part of the United States and help us out, sorry, Jack, you still got to become a citizen. Still got to do it the right way. There are rules that have to be followed. That's just the way it is. Maybe later on down the line, we won't have any need for that, but right now, that's how it is. And we, that's how things are organized, but we invite you to come to take those steps and to go through that process. And learn history the right way, the true history of this country, not the false narrative that gets spouted to make us seem like a bunch of racists. No, the true history where we freed ourselves from a monarchy to create a nation like none other this world has ever seen. A nation, a land where all men and women... I'm going to go ahead and add that addendum because in the Constitution, when it says all men are created equal, it, it means mankind. It means humans, okay, just in case you didn't know. But we're all men are created equal under God. We are all blessed with unalienable rights. That means this government recognizes rights that were given to you by God, and it can't take them away. We invite you to be a part of that. Don't buy into the lies. Don't buy into the bullshit, okay? And any of you guys out there, if you see this nonsensical revisionist history popping up, I highly encourage you to fight against it. Argue against it. Debate it. Put these people in their place. Ask them for evidence. Debunk their bullshit. Because to me, this is one of the most insidious and fucked up ways that they're trying to destroy this country and destroy anything resembling a civilized Western society. This is what they're trying to do. 
So you guys, please work with me, fight against this. And that also, you know, that includes you guys doing your own research. Please pick up a history book. What, not one written today. I would prefer you pick one up that was written, you know, a long time ago. You know, and read several because there's always different, differing accounts of history. Just got to do the digging. Try to find out the truth. Anyway, look, I've rambled on for far longer than I'm sure you cared to listen to. But that's my opinion on it. If there's, one, if there's one thing in this world that just infuriates me to no end is the absolute misrep misrepresentation of history, the manipulation of history, and the complete rewriting of history to benefit someone else's ulterior motive. It's not right, it's fucked up, and it needs to stop. We need to be aware of it, and we need to fight back against it. But that's all I got. Hope you guys are uh, having a great week, and we'll see you in the next video. As always, stay awesome. Uh, take it easy, keep your head on a swivel, and uh, I already said it, but I'll say it again. We'll see you in the next, we'll see you in the next video. Later. <laughs>